me the other day. They actually sent me an email. Why are you staying at the Fort Gary Hotel in Winnipeg? Are you homeless? All the opening shots, so like the opening time lapses you saw at the beginning of the video, this is all shot out of the windows of the hotels. Fort Gary people here are awesome. They actually allow me in the building usually once a month, sometimes twice a month. Fort Gary Hotel is hands down my favorite building in the entire city. If you're in Winnipeg, I highly recommend you stay here. Thank me later. Yeah, off to the workout. So in all seriousness though, I got a video topic for you today. I filmed the whole part yesterday, but the files ended up getting corrupted. So I'm just gonna refilm it now, which is why I'm clean shaven now and, and everything else in the video is bearded. Getting cut. And, and how getting cut and facing this adversity that I've been facing over the last couple months, I think has made me a better goaltender, a better person, a better athlete, a better student of life, a better student at the game. By no means am I happy that, that I've, I've been released by all these teams and I haven't found the breaks and the opportunities that I would have liked. I am happy that I've had the experiences that I've had because these would not enable me to be where I am right now in regards to where I'm at mentally and where I'm at moving forward and how I feel about my game. Hockey is about skill. It's about being good. Right? If, you're, if you're great, if you're a stud, if you're a standout like a Sidney Crosby or Connor McDavid, you're going to play places, you're going to go places very fast. It's just how it is. For the rest of us, like myself and like others, it's a lot about being lucky, about being at the right place, right time, right coach, right program. There's a lot of variables that go into it that have to go right for you for you to be successful. And now I'm not making excuses, but this is... This is something that has to go right for some guys to be successful, like myself. Just not good enough to get by on talent and skill alone. We need opportunity, we need breaks. In my game previously, it's like a, it was like a fish out of water. There's a lot of things that, that weren't smooth, they weren't fluid. They, but when I started skating at the U Sport level, I started understanding that if I'm gonna be successful or have like a sniff, even this much success here, and if this is gonna last, I'm gonna be successful, I need to be square on every single puck. I cannot be committing to my feet because these guys will just murder me if I'm on my knees all the time like I always am. I have to add a touch more depth. Not a lot, a touch more depth. These guys are just picking me apart on the goal line. That was another thing I had to change. But keeping the feet, and working on my rotations to be square on every single puck was such a big key. And I think it's underappreciated in the goaltending world because you're told to be square, you're told to be on your feet. Nobody explains to you what that means or what that looks like. Like when, where do you draw the line with that? If I can find an opportunity next season, whether it be in the BCIHL, the ACAC, which are both Canadian college leagues or somewhere down in the States, I don't care. I know that I'm gonna be successful and I am more equipped today to be successful at the collegiate level game over the course of four to five years, give or take, than before I went to Vancouver Island University. I look at it now, there is no fucking way I was ever gonna succeed at VIU with the mindset that I had and the assets that I came into. And to this day, I regret a lot of the choices that I made and I'm never gonna be able to fix them, but me did I ever learn from them. And it was a hard lesson to learn. This is something that's gonna be sticking with me for the rest of my life, both life lesson wise and hockey wise. Now I have a brand new segment I wanna to debut today. I'll discuss that probably a little bit closer to the end of the video, but I also have an ice time from last night I wanna show you. And then we'll get to this new segment. I really think this is gonna be a hit. We will transition to that right now.
What do you think the TSN turning point of that game was? Here, I put supposed to put it on you. Is well, it still on or off? Still on. Well, Dale, we uh, we backtracked hard. We had a big uh, six minute kill. Had that one chest save with uh, what eight minutes left. Oh, the big key. Uh, no rebound too. That hit you in the chest or the elbow? I would wasn't able to see. Hey, good game out there. Hey, good game. Good game. Good game. Well, just interview. No big deal. Just interview. I couldn't have done it with my teammates. I don't. I don't know to turn it off. Oh. The stairs were not fun ever. So I've been at the Fort Garry Hotel a lot in the last couple of days. So the hotel staff were so awesome. They allow me into the hotel. I usually just stick around for like two or three hours. And they let me shoot all the opening time lapses that you see in these videos and all this other kind of stuff out of the hotel windows. So usually I come and I stock up on as much as I possibly can. And in today's video, I'm gonna do a segment that has never appeared in this channel before. I call this segment, Hotel Reviews. Let's begin. First off, this is like the minor details, but this bathroom, be like, look at this thing. Also, I got some shampoo. I think it's this one. It smells like orange Tic Tacs, and I love that. Union Station, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hold that frame for a second. That is that right there. Like, this screams Winnipeg to me. This, that view I just showed you outside, this is what it used to look like. Then here's just some really old cool painting with like some horses and stuff. Best part of any hotel, you gotta have a great menu. Every day when you wake up, they come and they drop off coffee and tea at your front door. Like, this is unheard of. At least, I've never heard of this before. House made with croissants, danishes, bread. You have me at croissants. They also have this Christmas tree downstairs. It's not really a real Christmas tree. It's like a fake plastic one. It comes in like 50 pieces, but they have like real Christmas wreaths that smell like trees downstairs. It's awesome. So much good stuff in this hotel. Never worn one of those, but I should. Oh, light turns on, that's kind of cool. I'm not a big TV guy. I don't watch a lot of TV, but it is nice having a TV. I do a good amount of traveling, so maybe I'll do some more reviews on hotels that I stay in the upcoming future. But this is, again, my favorite place in all of Winnipeg, my favorite building. I'm biased, 10 out of 10. You should stay here if you're coming to Winnipeg. That concludes the video. We're gonna send things off to some cinematics, the ad, call it a day. Thanks for watching. I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't doing these sideline swap ads because I get a nice big fat paycheck on the first of every month. It's true and it's a fact, but it's also a fact that it's the greatest website in the world. I support the website. I've been doing these ads for three years, been close to three years, because sideline swap is an awesome place and the only place I would buy or sell pro return new or used sporting equipment. Go to the website. I'll see you in the next video.